We're back here at the NRA National Sporting Arms Museum here at Bass Pro Shops in Springfield, Missouri. I'm John Pop with Jim Sapika. He is the director of the NRA Museums. And Jim, we're doing this special series of Curator Corners right here in Springfield, Missouri at the Bass Pro Mothership at the NRA National Sporting Arms Museum. I'm so excited. I'm really excited about this farm because it almost looks like if I called the props department and said, give me something <laughs> right out of a Western, they would produce a farm like this, but this is, a, this is not a prop. That's so, what they were trying to make it look like. And, and you know, it's the Sporting Arms Museum, but we have other guns here. And one thing we have an especially nice grouping of is guns that were actually used by the lawmen and outlaws of the which, Old West. Which I love that. I do party. too, it's I so do great. too. And this is one of those. Uh, this belonged to Black Jack Ketchum. Now, he not only was a bad man, he was very bad at being a bad man. He's one of the, the, the most bad luck train robbers you'll ever run into. And uh, uh, this was his gun. Uh, he and his brother were born in Texas, and they kind of cowboyed back and forth between uh, New Mexico and Texas. Right. And uh, uh, Rob did a little train robbing, did a little cowboying, did a little more train robbing, killed a few people, yeah, got into you know. uh, shootouts with uh, posses and lawmen, and just uh, uh, generally bad, bad folks. Ran with the Hole in the Wall gang, which of course is where uh, uh, Butch Cassidy and the Hole in the Wall gang was. Uh, but there was a whole group of, of outlaws that were, were running in and out of that area. And uh, uh, Blackjack uh, Ketchum was in a gang uh, with a number of notorious criminals, including his brother, uh, Robin Trains. And uh, he and his brother had a little falling out. And so his brother took the rest of the, rest of the group, and they, uh, they robbed a train. Uh, it didn't work out so well. The brother got shot and caught and eventually died. But uh, a month later, Blackjack was back by himself at the exact same spot on the tracks for the exact same train. And this was the third time this conductor had been robbed. Wow. This time he brought his shotgun and he shotgunned Blackjack off his horse as the train kept on rolling by. So Ketchum's laying there by the track with his arm half shot off, trying to get on his horse. They stop at a town and say, hey, we shot a guy a ways back down the Go track. Pick up the Next morning, pick they, up the pieces. Exactly. Next morning they sent out a posse. Posse went and found him laying beside the tracks. He hadn't had enough strength to get back on his horse. He tried. Jeez. Uh, he actually flagged him down. He waved his hat at him and said, come Please pick me up. Please help me. Sent him to prison. His arm had to be amputated. Oh, Lord. And eventually he was convicted and tried to hang. Now, he was convicted in a, a, a small county in New Mexico. They'd never hung anybody before. And they weren't quite sure how to go about it. But they practiced with a 200-pound bag, said, yeah, that looks about right. So they got him up on the flat platform. His last words were, hurry up, boys. Put the noose around his neck. They chopped the rope in two for him to fall, fall through. And uh, uh, his head came off like a pot bead. Oh, more. And so his body's laying there. His head's laying there. The photographer is there with the big poof. Became a really popular postcard of I the Black imagine. Jack Ketchum hanging. And that was, that was his end. Now, to add insult to injury, uh, he was convicted of felonious assault on a railway train. That's what, that was capital punishment. He was the only person ever to be executed for that. Wow. And a few years later, the US Supreme Court ruled, hey, no, you can't just hang somebody for robbing a train. Now you so, tell uh, us. Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, Blackjack. Wow. Uh, well, you talk about if you don't have any, if it weren't for bad luck, you'd have no luck yeah, at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, very bad at being a bad guy. Wow. So all I can say with a name like that, they didn't have much trouble trying to catch him. Oh, I'm man. sorry. I'm sorry, Jim. I couldn't. I couldn't. Couldn't resist. It's so. been a long day. It's been a long day. Yeah, it has. But what a yeah, great story! And what another great story here. Every one of these farms tells such a great story here, and, and especially some of these these colorful farms from some John, of these colorful John characters. John Wesley Harden, Jesse James, uh, uh, Bass Reeves, Frank Hamer. All the, all the famous names and, and incredible people. And they're right here. How do we see them? NRA National Sporting Arms Museum at Bass Pro Shops in Springfield, Missouri. We got some very cool guns at the NRA National Firearms Museum in Fairfax, Virginia as well. Or you can see these online at nramuseums.com. Jim Sapika, another great segment of the Curator's Corner. Thank you, sir. We'll see you for the next one.